all wrong. Howdy folks, <laughs> 965 here. Um, bit of a continuation really from the last video where we did the modified uh, Antron 99 project. Um, I had a couple of messages sent through which said you could do with some really heavy duty guy wire stakes for that antenna. And funny enough, that was always on the cards to make. That was the follow on project from it. So today's video, back in the workshop, because I've had the request, so we're back in the workshop, people want to see it, so we're here. And um, we're making some heavy duty antenna guy wire stakes, and they look like that. So what that is, is five mil thick, one inch by one inch um, angle iron. It's stainless steel, because that's what I could, I could get hold of, that's what I come across. Um, which is good because it's got some anti-corrosive properties, which means it doesn't really need a coat of paint, which is great. I don't know what um, specification of stainless it is. Some stainless does go rusty, so if it does, I'll slop it in the paint pot and no problems at all. So that's what it is. That's the, the stake. I've cut a pointed end on it. Um, obviously, it comes in lengths that look like that. And I've just cut a pointed end on one end. And then on the other end... I've put a top cap, which has got a hole in it to take the carabiners for um, the guy wire attaching onto them, if you get what I mean. So we're going to crack the welder out in this video. Um, I'm not a welder, I can weld, that's how I describe it. So this isn't a tutorial on welding by any means, and I'm not going to do any because I'm not qualified to do so. So as I said, it is stainless. Um, normally I would do this sort of project with my MIG welder. Um, but I've only got mild steel wire in the MIG welder. So um, I'm going to use the stick welder for this one. And I've got some stainless steel um, 316L stainless steel welding rods here. I don't do much stainless work, so I only got a small pack. Um, but um, yeah, very good. Come out very well, very pleased with them. And um, you can see uh, it's all nicely welded. That's all, that's penetrated. You know nicely so it's nice and strong um, I've had it in the vice and I've been giving it a good bash and it hasn't shifted one iota um, there's a couple of little tack welds on the inside but nothing nothing major the, the you know the strength is on the outside but um, yeah very pleased with them and uh, let's cut the waffle and let's get on and build them okay so having decided that we want them to be 16 inches long uh, first job to do is obviously to mark out the appropriate length which in our case is 16 inches and once you've done that you're going to take the square and mark a nice straight line across like that um, both sides so you can follow the line nicely with the bandsaw and there we go nice straight line 16 inches down from the end and uh, that's where we'll chop it and we'll go to the bandsaw and chop that now Okay, so once you've got your pieces of um, material, whatever you're using, you need to mark on how you want the spike or the taper to be, which is going to allow you to push it into the ground easier. Now, if you're cutting it with a grinder, I would advise you mark it on the top side, from here to here, and from here to there. If, like me, you're going to cut it on a bandsaw, I would advise you to mark it on the inside because what it allows you to do is utilize the flat section on the bed of the bandsaw. Otherwise, if you try to cut it like that on a bandsaw, it's a bit... Hmm. Depends on the table you've got for your bandsaw, but that would be much easier to push through the bandsaw. So what I'm going to do, instead of using my usual, what I normally use to mark steel, which is like soapstone or French chalk, I'm going to use a red, uh, red marker. It's actually an eraser, uh, dry erase whiteboard jobby but do for this nice and red so it'd be easy to see so what I've decided is that three inches up from the bottom is going to give me a sufficient taper so what I'm going to do is mark three inches on the edge here you can see that there I'm also going to do it obviously on the other side there we go and then it's just a simple case of joining the outside edge to 
the centre point and that'll give you your taper. So I'm just going to mark that on there now. I'll do this side first. You want to try and use a thin marker if you can because otherwise a fat boy will, uh, it might cause you to um, not get into the gap which this is causing me here. <laughs> As I say I'm only doing this so you can see it on the camera. So there's the first line drawn. Okay. I'll have a go at doing this one back to front so you can see a bit better. So we're going to mark that in line. We get the marker pen in there. Oops, wobbly. There we go. I'm trying to do things back to front and upside down for the camera. It does put a lot of time onto projects when you have to film it, but I don't mind, so just be aware, you know, does. <laughs> It does add that extra time. So there, that if you can imagine that that is going to be the spike, and that's going to allow you to push it into the ground a lot easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that on the bandsaw, and I should be back. Right, there's the first side cut. I haven't been uh, filming it all because I don't think you probably want to see all of me chopping through metal. So what I'll do, I'll do the next one, and I'll uh, speed it up a little bit for you. Right, I'm just going to tidy uh, this one up on the linisher here, which is like a belt sander. And uh, that'll just take all the sharp effort, sliver, sharp edges off in no time. Lovely jubbly. We've got to that stage. Got three ground spikes now. What I did, as you saw on the linisher, is I've taken the sharp edges off so that's nice and smooth. Two things you're not going to catch yourself, you're not going to catch the um, guy wires, and it's going to be less resistance to push into the ground, so that's all a Billy bonus. And what I've done, if you can just see on the end there, is I've just and just put a little bit of a rounding on the end. I didn't want to take it to a point, I could have I could have sharpened that into a real point but the thinner it is the weaker it is so I've left it nice and strong next thing we're going to do is put the cap on the top okay and um, that's simply going to be done by using where is it I've got a piece of uh, one inch flat bar here and um, if I show you we're simply going to just cap off the top cap off the top like that Okay, and then in this corner, we're going to drill the hole for the carabiner. So I'm going to measure the carabiner, get the proper drill bit, and we'll be uh, ready to uh, measure, mark, and drill. Catch you in a bit. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm just getting a good idea of the um, top of the stake in relation to the top cap that's going to go on there. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill the holes in the flat bar before I cut them off because it's much easier to hold a big piece than a tiny little one inch square and try and put a, a hole through. So what I'm going to do now is grab my center dot and work out that's roughly going to be so basically it's going to be there. Okay so got the center dot and we're going to put a center dot in the steel to excuse the noise and the camera may jump And that, for those of you that don't know about drilling metal, that will stop the smaller drill bit from scooting around on the top before you go through it with the big one. I didn't have, believe it or not, I haven't got a set of metal drill bits. Um, I'm, I've got to get a set. Um, I've had sets and I've gone through sets and I've got to get another set because I'm yet to find a good set of metal drilling drill bits that last for any length of time. So uh, there we go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to drill that hole at the, the uh, pillar drill or the drill press for our uh, friends across the water there and um, 
then we'll cut it off and we'll be job done. Okay. So you can see there, just by using a, um, a vernier caliper, you can get the exact dimensions. And this one is a shade under 8 millimeters. So uh, if I go with an 8.5 millimeter hole, that'll give me plenty of clearance without having to faff around working that through the hole. Right, on we go. Okay, so we're all set up to uh, drill the uh, pilot, if you like, the pilot hole. And um, we're going to kick that off. Okay, I've already gone ahead and drilled um, the hole for where the carabiner is going to go through, but just a 965 top tip here. Once you've drilled a hole in a piece of metal, if you want to deburr it and give it a little bit of a countersink, make it nice and smooth, take a, a larger drill bit than the hole you've drilled. That's a 9mm hole. This is a 13mm bit. And all you've got to do is just quick, just give it a light... Just like that and then you can see hopefully you've got a nice smooth ever such a slight countersink on there but nothing crazy and um, yeah all nice and smooth well, there you go right Right, okay, after uh, a few sparks and a bit of blue light and a bit of sandpaper and um, I did a bit of a quick tidy up on the linisher as you saw, we've got our set of heavy duty stakes all done. Holes are in the tops like that, and they're all nicely welded up so I'm pleased with that. I've never used um, stainless steel stick legs before but it uh, all came out quite nicely. You can see there. There'll be a couple of pictures at the end there, so you can see them in the, <laughs> all their glory. So we're good to go. Um, next project is um, obviously getting getting on with the drive-on mount and the uh, waterproof box. So whew, yeah, we got plenty to do, and um, we'll see uh, see about getting another video up shortly. Um, a chap messaged me, Andy. I'll do. Um, about um, a modified plate for the back of the Land Rover where I got the tow pack. I've got a Dixon Bait tow pack on the back. And um, obviously they take shoes that you can move into different low, different heights. So what he suggested I did was make one of those or make a version of that so that I could mount that on the, on the tow pack and just lift it up on the tow pack. Um, and that was a good suggestion. As I said to him, um, I've already got a spare or I've got a, a sort of a modified spare shoe to go on the back which will take that so that's not a problem but it's a good suggestion um, that's what I like to see if you've got any suggestions let's hear them and uh, we get out to try these in the field soon hopefully but uh, yeah it's all good so we've got the stakes got the collar got the carabiners and we've got the guy wires so we're all set to go um, it's just finding the time to get out there and do it really. So there we go, another project done. Any questions or comments, I want to hear them. Um, I will just say that someone's going to mention about the fumes from the stick welding. Make sure you're either outdoors or you've got good ventilation. I actually had the extractor fan on, I don't know whether you could hear it, but it is... 
I have got an extractor fan and that was on. So that's fine. Um, also, if you are going to do some stick welding and you start chipping the slag off, make sure you've got eye protection on. Catch you later, guys. Thanks very much.